Welcome to Social Media Meltdown with Kaylin and Joe. Um, Joe, what what topic do we have this week? Let's jump right into it. Cause this is well, really exciting. Do, do we even have a snappy name? Because it's so complicated. It's like there's there's people getting fired. There's lawsuits. There's flames. It's just crazy. So I racked my brain for the last half hour, and I was like, "What are we gonna call this episode?" Because we've had kind of cool-ish names. I mean, they're kind of cool, but, you know, whatever. And so I was trying to think of something, but you're right, it's too complicated. So I ended up call- getting straight to the point and calling it Password Rights. Password Rights. Oh. Yes. That is, that's a good name. It's very descriptive of what we will be talking about today. Well, okay, and, and what's kind of sparked me talking about this whole thing was the, um, this this case in Detroit. Do you want to do you want to kick off with that and kind of get people in on what we're talking about? Yeah, no, I mean this has been happening in a couple different areas, but it really hit home to us this week when um, a teacher's aide in Southwest Michigan um, was suspended from her job um, because her school district asked for her, I believe it's her Facebook um, password. And uh, she obviously declined. Yeah. She she was like, no, you're not going to have my password. That's my personal information. Exactly. I mean, you're taught all this time, you know, never make a good password and don't tell anyone. Uh, and now uh, people are demanding you give up your passwords to everything from Facebook to Twitter, which I'm not really sure what's too private about Twitter that yeah, I know. need your password for. Um, but... Uh, They've seen it with, um, what's it called, the, uh, the picture thing. Uh, Pitch Flickr? Yeah, Flickr. Yes. People are asking for people's Flickrs and, and all kinds of stuff. And, and um, it's just a very odd request, I feel. Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, Facebook, I guess you can get some good information out of it. Um, the other networks, I'm not really sure why they would need access to your personal information. But that's what's going on right now. And... Um, so right now this teacher is, uh, obviously battling the school district over their decision, um, that it's not fair. So I guess we'll see, we'll see how it goes, but she is on unpaid leave, which is also kind of harsh. Yeah, totally. I mean, they told her, you know, like, cause she didn't want to give up the password and they basically said, Hey, if you don't give up your password, we're going to assume the worst and you're done. And, and she got, she got the boot. Like this is I feel like this is like a breach of privacy. I feel like this is this is like a, a breach of almost like civil rights because this is like uh, what 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 un, unreasonable search and seizure. I, I mean, the, what what was the that one where it's like the military can't come into your house and like post up and stuff like that. Yeah. I feel like they're busting in your doors and saying you got to tell us what this is about. But but what about the the effects on this like? What about like in a job interview? This makes me honestly, this makes me want to just close up, close up everything and just say done. You know what? I don't need this. I can just go under, just delete Speedy F40, delete Joe Cariati, delete everything. Just start over as a completely different name. Just, you know, something crazy that I've never even, and just completely wipe myself clean. But, but even then people could still Google all my stuff in the past. There's no real way to do it. So I was trying to think of a way that we could somehow relate this to an issue that has affected previous generations. And um, they do background checks on people. They find out people's financial information through background checks. People do credit score checks. Yeah, and when you say people, you mean businesses and places you're going to be applying to. Yeah, so businesses do um, better... um, what did I just say? Credit uh, checks, background credit checks. checks. And that's a really, I feel like a, a job knowing my credit history is almost more personal to me than, than someone knowing what I post on the internet. Um, and so that's, and, and a lot of people feel the same way that they don't want people to, businesses and their future employers being able to know their credit score and knowing um, how, much, how much their student loans are. And it, that's a lot of really personal information that companies are already getting about you. Um, 
and uh, right now people you know really don't care i mean you go ahead and sign the form when you get a new job i'm sure you just got a new job and you sign the form no problem yeah i mean because you have to you know like but I- i've heard cases of people during interviews like okay we just want to log into your facebook profile and you know check what you're posting I've, mm-hmm. I've I've read cases of that, of people saying they're sitting across from, you know, like, just log in. We just want to look through real quick. And, you know, and there's even cases of people not getting hired because they have too many uh, political opinions or they're just too raunchy or something like that. And it, it just seems like, like, I can understand you would check somebody's credit history if the job makes sense. You know, like, if you're going to be working... With money and investments, you check their credit history to make sure their things are they, in order. I mean, they did it for me, and I'm a communications person, but. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's kind of weird. I, I don't, I don't really like that. That's weird. But I, is- I do know, I do know, like, um, in the military, things like, you know, they they monitor your credit and things like that. But I, I, I just feel like there's there's a disconnect there. Like, okay, you know, there's you know, you on paper. And then there's you in real life, and I think that the Facebook, the Facebook, I think that the internet, I kind of molds this together and gives you a play-by-play, a minute-by-minute history of you, and you can really single out any specific part of that and make it look really good or really bad, uh, depending on I don't know how you're feeling that day, you know? It, it's true, and it's I don't know, it's just. And like you said, there's there's the you in person, and then there's the the you on paper, which is that really awesome resume that you've See, spent the I, last I look, two I years look way writing. better in in person. I'm I'm much better than <laughs> it, my 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 paper person isn't that good. Well, then some people is different. I mean, <laughs> I'm much more impressive on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> but I take a lot of time to to cultivate that image to look better on the internet, and then I just. I figure out a way to live up to it, yeah. um, and and I do pretty well. But I'm always really nervous that people expect so much more out of me because of of what they see or read about me online. Um, but it is true. And so, do you really get valuable information um, from what you read about a person on their Facebook? I mean, take the the average college senior that's going out for their first job. Um, probably what you see on their Facebook is not how they want to live their lives. It's more of how they're expected to live their lives because they're seniors in college and they live on campus. And there's a certain lifestyle that you're you're, you're expected to, to portray. And that usually comes out on your Facebook. But when you cross that threshold, you're trying your yourself into a uh, a person that people are going to want to hire. I think that's what it comes down to. Like, when do you ever care about what people think other than when you're going for a job, you know? Other than that, you can pretty much do whatever you want. I know my, my buddy who is applying for the police academy, like, they look through everything, everything. And, I mean, rightly so, but... but and that's like, perfectly acceptable, and I think if you're going into that profession... Yeah, then- like police and doctors and and it's expected that since you are doing a huge service for uh the good of mankind and society that they (laughs) need to know (laughs) they need to make sure that you're an okay person and you're not like posting pictures of you drunk driving and hanging out the window of your pickup truck or something yeah or or it's just like (laughs) Like every one of these people that are gonna like four twenties coming up, like all these people that are gonna be like, yeah, check out my sweet stash, like immediately defriended because it's not just the things that that you post. Think of, I mean, it's the things that other people post on your wall. You're held accountable for that. So yeah. if you're po- posting like, you know, or you're on Facebook and somebody posts some picture of you like swinging from the ceiling, completely drunk, obliter- obliterated, uh, f- you know, like just saying awful things or, I mean, that's, that's on you. But even if it's not you, if it's just like a, a, a risque photo of someone posted to your wall and it has like some, you know, meaning on it, I like, this is, it, if it's on your wall, it counts as you, you know, like, it, I, I, I don't want people, I don't want legislation for this, I, I just want it to be, 
Like, and that's what's going to happen. It's going to come down to people are going to eventually enough cases are going to happen where people feel like they get shafted and it's going to change to a point where it's like employers can't demand passwords mm-hmm. and what's public is public, what's private is private, which what's that's how it should be. But I just I, I hate when, you know, the legislation sticks its hands <laughs> I didn't want to say other things <laughs> sticks its hands in places where it doesn't belong but may- maybe it does belong here well, I mean what do you think is this a spot where know, we like need the, the, it's like, do we need the government in here to say hey get some legislation we need protection from employers because they're going to be I, they're going to be basing their decision on who the person is like is that really even a valid case like of course the employee the employer wants their employee to be a straight shooter you know i know well i mean uh this was this issue was taken to the house and um let's see it was on wednesday they voted on it um and it was brought to the house by um was it, was it the michigan house or was it the house of representatives for the u.s i believe it was House of Republicans. Okay. That is what this article said. Okay. So um, I'll link the article and just guy, it up. <laughs> Yeah, and the article will be posted so you can read all about it. But uh, um, this guy from Colorado, some representative guy, um, he takes this this bill to the House, and it was um, it's it was an FCC bill about a bunch of other stuff, but attached to it, it had an amendment that. Um, says that employers cannot demand as a condition of employment that someone will reveal their confidential passwords to their Facebook or their Flickr or their Twitter or any other account. Um, But it it got shot down. So um, apparently... Yeah. Oh, there we go. We want to know everything about you, and we don't really care if you want to give us your password. Well, I mean, the government already knows a bunch about you, and Facebook just makes it easier. On the other side of things, you know, like the first place that sheriff departments and and detectives check is Facebook. You know, mm-hmm. like that is such a big thing. They they go on to Facebook, they go on to social networks, they find like, hey, I just knocked out a convenience store, and you've incriminated yourself. You've you've admitted that of the crime and you Mm -hmm. get caught and so i mean like there's there's merit there you know there's a reason it's but but still uh, this this watchful eye it's that privacy it's that security that really gets people uneasy but this isn't this is past security it's it's like a breach of privacy i think honestly if, if if you have a private profile then it should be private i mean is there and if and your private me- even if you have a public profile your private messages and the the albums that you keep friends only and the the groups i mean um i mean uh, some of the, con- been, some of the conversations well, in some of the groups i belong to i mean are maybe unsavory to some employers um but good I terminology mean, <laughs> i mean just my 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 friends are just you know, all over the place. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody's goofy and wacky, and everybody. And we keep it in a private setting because exactly. of this very thing. We don't want. What's so? You know what's scary though? Like Twitter, their direct messages aren't really like encrypted. Every direct, I use Twitter like like I'm texting. You're yeah, like so you Twitter know. is my twi- my my tw- I twext. So anyway, um, <laughs> you better coin that. Uh, so anyway, my twexting on Twitter, um. <laughs> I like that's all like in the public domain basically because mm-hmm. Twitter doesn't really um, protect you against that. Your direct messages aren't always direct and they're not always private. And I, you really have to assume the worst in everything. <laughs> it, it's really kind of I, I think we're like this these growing pains we're experiencing as a digital society are really really gonna warp the way employers, employees, and and even the states and governments have interactions with their their people. You know. And the thing is, is that this is this has only been coming out in the last couple of weeks that people are refusing to give out their passwords. I mean, think of how many people have already freely given up their passwords, um, given up their rights to have a private life outside work by giving up these passwords. And I only I mean, hope... Why, 
I only hope that something like this would happen to me. However, I run the social media department, and I'm the only person in our building that can seem to log into Twitter. So <laughs> I, I don't think I have an issue at my work. But okay, but. so I mean, yeah, I mean, you have your question that you're going to pose a little bit later. But like, what has, where where do you draw the line? Where what is an appropriate amount of probing from an employer? What what's public? What's it's public? not public. It's none of your business. Ser- seriously, that and I think you're absolutely right. Like that's. I mean, next they're going to be like, "Let's do tours of your house, and then we'll make you an offer." <laughs> like it just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. No, I. It doesn't. I, I do feel a little bit violated, and not like in a funny way. Like I, I, I feel like people are getting the shaft. And mm-hmm. um, especially this teacher's assistant who who the it was a joke. It was a joke. And like it seemed like some parent who just had it out. You know, you got to go read the story. It's over at just cool dot com. But it seems like it was just one parent that just had it out like, oh, you gave my my kid a bad grade. You really got to watch out for the one person that has a vendetta against you. Mm-hmm. They could blow it up. They could absolutely blow up your your whole career and everything. And teachers um, have to be really, really careful. Teachers should never friend students and i think that like if you're going to have a profile it has to be private you have to know everybody you're talking to and this really makes me want to just curl up into a ball and just say you know what you know like i have my fan page where i just kind of spew out all the stuff that i do and then that's it my friends yeah. are you know 50 people or so mm-hmm. and, and that's it and that, i mean and I uh, that's what what's going to have to happen uh, my professor um, this semester, I'm in a graduate program studying social media, and uh, she's my age, and she has the exact same job that I have, and um, and so we always have a lot to talk about, and, and, and I like talking to her, and we bounce ideas off of each other um, on like a, a business basis and not really have anything to do with class, and um, she has a strong policy of not friending students online. And so it's really, I mean, I have to email her. We both talk about how awkward it is to email each other. And um, I just want to be friends with her on Facebook and be like, hey, what did you do today at work? And how is it going with your internal blog and stuff like that? As two professionals to another. But I respect the fact that she has this rule and that she is sticking to it. Because you never know, even on a college level. I mean, I think the college kids are even more vindictive. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like, if, if you – like, college kids, it'll take a half a second for a professor they don't like if to – you know, they, they even if somebody just posts on their account, you're still held accountable for it. It's like the person driving, you know, like, whatever happens within that car – it's your responsibility. If somebody litters out the window, you know, you're the the driver gets the fine. If if somebody's mooning somebody, the driver gets the fine. So, I mean, it is like, you know, you're held accountable. If you leave your Facebook logged in at a library well, or a public computer or something. You're so dumb. Yeah, who uses a library anyway? But, you know, if so, but... My I'm, best friend works at a library. She's a librarian. Support I'm, your local library. By renting movies. Um, <laughs> that works. I read yeah, yeah, support your library by renting <laughs> ebooks. Ebooks from the library—that's a thing. You could do it, but yeah. um, you you had an awesome question. I really want you to pose it now. <laughs> like, okay, well, well, give me one more second. Okay, I have one more point second. to make real quick. Okay, um, I want to hear. That, although the U.S. House has has shot down this amendment that that would ban employees or employers from asking for their employees' passwords or prospective employees' passwords. Um, Facebook is threatening lawsuits against employers, um, saying that it's inappropriate access to employees' accounts. It's against. It's actually against Facebook's rules to have the password of someone else's account. Um, so at least Facebook is standing up to the man. Well, I'm and glad that, I accidentally agreed to that in the EULA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so by clicking accept when uh, they changed all of their crap, um, you would have actually saved yourself. Um, you, so you can use that as a plausible argument. Uh, I'm sorry, but according to Facebook's terms and conditions, um, it is, I am not allowed to share my password with anyone, and it is actually against their terms and conditions for you to have my password. Yeah, I mean, it's I think... It's all about education, people. It is. That, that's good. I'm, about, I'm glad yeah. that you said that. Yes. So, so spread um, the word. You. It is not... I mean, it is against Facebook's terms of service mm-hmm. to 
give out your password. It is against the terms of service, and you'd be violating that. So yeah. if an employer asks you, that's something to think about. Would you? Would you still? I mean, like, what happens? If any, if this happens to anyone, I would love to be your PR person. Like, I just <laughs> want to like rip people new ones over this issue because I feel like people are just getting taken advantage of. I mean, you don't want to lose your job. So this brings me to my question. If you were, you have, you just got a new job. So in your last interview, when they're, or when they're giving you your papers to sign and it asks you for your password, it's either give us your password or we'll see you later. What, what would you have chosen? So, I mean, it, basically it comes down to, they're saying you have to give, surrender your privacy mm -hmm. and let us check your Facebook account. Or you don't get the job. Yep. Now, I don't particularly have too much incriminating things. It's not like I I'm have like, nothing. I, yeah, like honestly, I don't. Yeah, they could look at it, and I wouldn't care. But but, I, it, but but I feel like it is such a violation of of my privacy that on the grounds of just not wanting to work for a company that does that alone, you know, <laughs> like. I don't think I would agree to that. And even, you know what? I mean, like, even like a company phone, what you do on that phone is the company's. And, and so I'm perfectly okay with that. Because it's company property. Yes. But, but when you are going and overreaching, and I feel it's absolutely overreaching to say your personal life is now company life. Like, unless you're a public figure. Or you're signing up for that. Like there, there's just – there's this degree of an anonymity that everybody deserves. And um, to make it to make it available on the internet is – when it, when you mark it private, it's private. Like that's yeah. how it should be. I, I couldn't agree to the terms I, and I wouldn't agree to the terms on principle alone because I feel like – you know, you got to take a stand for the things that you believe in, and I feel like it is a violation. And I will, I, I know I could find another company that would respect my privacy and rights. I don't want to work for a company that doesn't respect my rights. Okay, so let's take it the other way. And say so you've been at this company for, I don't know, five years. You have a great position. You love being there. You love the people. You're emotionally attached to this position, and they asked you for your password as a new policy they're rolling out. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So you could get up and walk away from your job of five years. I, I absolutely would. Absolutely, because it's that I, I don't want to work for a company that that wants to be an overseer unless I was being promoted to a position like head of PR or, or you know like something that would put you in the spotlight, like maybe a lobbyist or something. You know, like like there has to be. Like there's, I understand there are positions and jobs that where you, I mean, everywhere you go, you represent the company you're, you're mm -hmm. working for, and it, when you're in the public spotlight. But if you have pr a private profile, my privacy needs to be protected. My privacy, I, I mean, people deserve privacy, and I, if, I would not work for a company that doesn't respect that. It's no. a it's a right, you know. As a as a person, you deserve privacy. As a person, as it's a your person, right. don't don't you feel like there's like a internet declaration of independent declaration of of rights that we should have? Like I, I've heard of it before, like our internet rights, but I, I don't think it's taken off. But maybe yeah. it'll take something like this to to make that happen. Yeah, it, and the internet just, bill of rights exists. I I know it. I've heard of it before, but. Like, uh, we can look it up. We're gonna have to. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's just—it's it's not a so leak finding frustrating dog. that only a handful of people are now making the news, saying that they refused and now lost their job. So I mean, think about how many people have already given it up. I—that's what I'm saying. Like we—we we have to take a stand. We can't be bullied by employers. It, no. It, it, that's that's. I mean, I I absolutely love the company I work for but I I don't I don't want to be I I mean like, there has to be a mutual respect for for their employees and I feel like a company that wants to know everything that's going on in your life you know asterisk for jobs that are very specifically you know needing that uh, yeah it, like 
I don't have I, I won't have respect for an, an, a company like that. I, I think you're on the same boat with me. Yeah, I am. I'm I'm completely on the same boat as you. And um, no job is is worth that. And I feel like it's it's disrespectful to you. It's just it is. It's very disrespectful. And um, especially <laughs> the funny thing is, is I don't understand why companies. Uh, this is just stupid of the company, but why they would take um, a stab at trying to do something that involves social media that they know is probably wrong, because that is going to blow up. Yeah, doesn't it seem on the like very on the wrong media that they're trying to control? Anytime you try to control social media, it backfires on you. So I don't understand like why a company is like. It, it's it's just gonna turn out so bad for them. Anyone they look at it. That's it's the awful. thing. It's like it's being it's like being on the wrong side of the race argument or something. Like in the in the fifties or sixties, like you know that this is absolutely gonna swing the other direction. Like what? Exactly. But uh, see, I'm trying to picture this from an employer's perspective, and I often do that. But I can't. Very see, nice but I can't see a real benefit to getting that. You know, like. Where is the benefit to the employer to know everything that's going on? I I could see in the hiring process why you'd want it, but mm-hmm. like I, but I there's cases that people are being checked out and they've been there forever, mm-hmm. and like you said, there's no okay one. It's a waste of time and money of the company if they are spending time sifting through employees' profiles. I'm guarantee you in this economy that there's a lot better ways that you totally, can use Totally, totally. What a, re- a waste of resources. Even to pay somebody minimum wage to exactly. do that. Like it, you would be much better paying somebody minimum wage to uh, – you know, cut cut the lawn or redo the shrubs in front or something yeah. like that. Like I just I, – I, I would really like to talk to – a hiring person, uh, an HR representative, uh, mm-hmm. somebody who's actually, you know, in it. Like, I, I feel like if you've made it public, I think that's the rule that we keep coming back to here. If you make it public, then it's fair game. If it's private, then it should stay private to the employer. And that's it. Yep. That's it. That's how it goes. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> End of story. End of story. And that's it. We were very militant today. And we were. I mean, we're both very passionate. I, I am very passionate. I even raised my voice. I raised my voice, too. Ah. <laughs> I get angry sometimes. On the internet. I don't believe you. I'm also angry about other things that happened on the internet today. Do you care to extrapolate? Yeah, I don't want them Android people on my Instagram. Oh, you, you elitist, you elitist jerk. <laughs> I, I, I do not want you. I'm going to be. Instagram it all day long. I'm going to buy an Android phone and get Instagram just to piss you off. Just to show you I can. I won't friend you. You won't. <laughs> you ha- I know you will. You 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 like the friends. No, I, I posted this. Um, it was just like a screen cap. And, uh, I posted on Instagram of a note that I had written in my phone. And I was like, I won't friend anyone. I won't friend an Android user because they won't understand my emoji. Because iPhones have the, the all the cool emoticons that only iPhones can use. And that's, that's basically all people talk with on Instagram. It's just emoji everywhere. And I was like, they won't understand us. We speak a different language. This and, is, uh, no, no. Why are you segregating the internet? Can't we be one people? <laughs> Priceless look. <laughs> you, you... This is this is you're on the wrong side of the argument. Like an employer trying to look through Facebook, you're on the wrong. However, side. there are a lot of um, Android users who are boycotting uh, Instagram just on the sole purpose that it took them so freaking long to make an app for Android. I yeah, I mean. More power to those people. Please stay. Off. <laughs> yeah, please stay away from me. Get your smelly Android phone away from me. We don't want you either. <laughs> oh my gosh! What an elitist jerk. No, so many great things have come out of Instagram because of the iPhone, and it's just... You know, I mean, there's... Like, those OLLO clips wouldn't even exist if Instagram and iPhoneography wasn't popular. Like, there's just... It's, but, it's a cultural but, thing that what we have... About, what about the in- innovation that comes from the masses? You know, like, you get a lot of crap, but you also get a good amount of innovation. 
But yeah, okay, so this is how I see it. And this is more from like a technical standpoint, not about the, the stereotypes of phone users and what kind of images are going to come out of these people. Um, but I mean, from a more technical standpoint, um, I follow a lot of people that I know on Instagram. And then I also follow a lot of people that just take really good photography mm-hmm. on Instagram. And in those comments for these really good people, it's always... Um, people asking like, how did how did you get the light like that? What did you do to your phone? What settings and these apps did you use? And how and uh, how what lens on your Olo clip did you use? And I mean, once you introduce the millions of Android phone models to the equation, that community is not going to exist anymore. You can't give tips uh, for someone and they using the most obscure Android phone ever created because. I don't even know how many models there are at this point, but it's a little ridiculous. But when you look at it as a company like Instagram, I mean, you're going to look at the numbers and you're going to say there's this giant market that we're not taking advantage of. And, you know, the top downloaded um, app for like the last like year and a half. But still, I mean, there there are so many Android phones out there. I totally I understand. Okay. Oh, my community is not going to be as intimate. Uh, what a whiny, what a whiny argument. They don't understand my emoji. <laughs> okay, all right. And then I put all the angry emoji after that comment. All the different angry ones, like the thumbs down and the mad face and the hipster yeah. anger. Yeah. All oh, that hipster, that pent up hipster anger. Mm-hmm. I love emoji. <laughs> I'll never understand your M. There's a little poop with a smiley face. That one's my favorite. <laughs> I guess I'll never know. No, because you don't have an iPhone. So I'm going to use my rant on Instagram as my special feature because that is what I was passionate about today. Passion. Um, I would also, to go along with my earlier conversation, I would like to plug your local public library because – uh Libraries are important, and you're already paying your tax dollars to them, so why don't you just go there and get a book, rent a movie? They have cool classes at some of them, all kinds of stuff. You can get your your papers proofread for free there instead of going back to your university and paying some pretentious douche, that uh, English major that doesn't really I've been majoring in English for 15 years. (laughs) Yeah, and they just like mark the crap out of your paper and give it back to you, and then you get no constructive comments. So you can take it to your public library, and they'll sit down with you, and they're so nice. And oh. uh, they'll write your work cited for you, and really, they'll write your resume. They'll help you do your resume, Joe. I proved yours a lot. Did you? Yeah, back in the day, I used to read yours. Yeah, you could read it again. Show, show me what I'm missing. But anyways, your public library people. Wow, that was a really good plug. It was. I'm really proud. Thank you. I think we had an awesome discussion. If anybody wants to participate in the discussion, uh, please give us an email. Our email address is socialmediameltdown at justcoolenough.com. You can reach myself and Caitlin there. And also you can follow us on Twitter. Doing the thing. Mine's Caitlin Shelby. And mine is at speedyf40. Um, One more thing. One more thing. Um... I, I this this whole issue is very I mean like I I think it's gonna be a hot button issue and I think we're gonna come back to it so I, I really would like some some good feedback on that so definitely do send emails our way uh, social media meltdown at just cool I think that this is the first of many discussions we're gonna have about employers and employees kind of tussling out over what privacy really means over the internet so and if you run into one of these problems, Joe and I will be more than happy to blow it up on the internet for oh, you. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Thanks for listening and watching, everybody. And uh, have a good day or evening. See you next week. Yeah. You'll see, see you next week.